Okay, up next, we're happy to welcome our next industry talk from ARM, where we'll have Roberto Lopez Mendez uh, presenting on verbal interaction with game NPCs on mobile. Um, yeah, thank you for joining uh, this talk and thank you to the organizers uh, for making this possible. So my name is Roberto and I'm the tech lead of developer advocacy team at ARM um, in Cambridge, UK. So today I will present an interesting project that we are developing in my team. Um, it is about interacting verbally with NPCs on mobile games. We have been researching the topic of NPCs uh, for some time using Unity ML agents. And uh, with this work, we offer a glimpse into the future of gaming, interacting with complex NPCs using natural speech. We want to demonstrate that it is possible to run small language model alongside Unity ML agents on mobile with great results. We think that verbal interaction significantly enhances the accessibility and interactivity in games. So, and this is the plan for the talk. I would like to show you first a video of the latest demo we did using Unity ML agents. Then I will share what motivated me to do the project we are presenting today. Also want to discuss a little the main challenges of running language model on mobile games. Uh, next, I will introduce a tiny story model for those of you that are not familiar with it and how we use it to add interactivity to Unity emulations. I will explain then um, the pipeline of the demo we built and will share some performance data. Finally, I will play a video of the demo and, and share some conclusions. I have the demo on my phone. So after the talk, you can approach me if you want to, uh, if you would like to try it, right? Um, <clears throat> so Koki Mitsunami from my team delivered this demo last year at GDC. In this demo, two teams of bunnies, 50 and 50 in each team, fight to break the opponent's cake. It was Easter time. Um, there, there are three different types of bunnies in each team that have been trained for different goals, attacker, defender, and a breaker. The bunnies are powered with a multi-layer perceptron brain it is possible to do it after we implemented a feature in Unity Sentence Inference Engine that we call it Frame Interference, Frame Interleaving Interference, where we distributed the interference among um, a few frames for different groups of agents. Although it's great having that many agents running, and that was the first time someone got that many agents uh, running on, on mobile, I have to say. Um, so it was great uh, having that many agents running at real time on mobile, but we wanted to achieve more interactivity. So I have a four-year-old granddaughter, and she uses to stay in front of the TV, close to the TV, when watching her favorite movies or songs. Then I thought, if she could interact with the characters of the movie, like in a game, how would she feel about it? Imagine a child in front of the big screen, talking with a character of the same height and brain age. So I guess it will be amazing for a child. So we needed interactive NPCs. For this, we needed also a language model running in the game, so we could interact verbally with the NPCs. This is not a picture of my granddaughter, right? <laughs> I, I asked a pilot. And what is it? It's, it's very close to what I had in mind, right? Um, so recent, lang uh, recent language models unlock the capability to expand player NPC interactions into natural language-based conversations. However, the large size of typical language model, large language models, with several billion parameters, limits its use to desktop computers and data centers. Running a language model on mobile is then very challenging, and even more inside of a game. Mobile devices have limited runtime resources in terms of processing capabilities, memory, and battery. Thermal issues and a strong game FPS requirement add more challenges. We need to greatly optimize a language model to be able to run it on a mobile game. 
we turn our attention to a series of highly compact language models called tiny stories. So tiny stories project wanted to explore the smallest possible language model that can still generate coherent and consistent English among other features. As a result, this work produced a series of small language models with a number of param parameters ranging from 1 million to, th to 33 millions, millions, not billions, parameters. An architecture ranging from a single transformer layer to four, with a vocabulary and knowledge of a typical three to four year old child. So using machine learning methods enables complex MPC behavior with a little code. Unity ML agents have proven great versatility and provides a great environment to train MPCs using reinforcement learning. With the advent of language models, we have the opportunity to add interactivity to Unity ML agents and, takes, and take MPCs to the next level. To generate our dialogues, we use the tiny story language model. But one major challenge is that the model was trained on short stories. So it is, like the name says, right? It is a content generation language model instead of a conversational language model. So we needed to repurpose tiny stories for conversations. The more cost-effective approach we found was to use prompt engineering, and this was sufficient for our purpose. Our goal in this project was to extend a Unity ML agent-based MPC with verbal interaction. So we designed our MPC's core capabilities in such a way that first, MPC can follow players verbal command in natural language to perform complex actions using Unity ML agent brain. Secondly, MPC can communicate with the player in natural language too. It means have a conversation. In addition, we wanted to maximize the efficiency of communication. So the interaction is entirely verbal and should use speech instead of text for both input and output. So based on, on, on these requirements, we designed the pilot you can see in the slide. So it is composed of a sequence of five modules. The speech models, the speech to text models convert player speech to text. The decision models decide whether to perform an action or dialogue. We use for this a sentence similarity model. The action module executes the decide uh, action using Unity ML agents. And the language model module generates responses to dialogues using tiny stories language model. Finally, the text to speech outputs uh, language model responses to speech. So the ML agent brain is a two layer, multi layer perceptron uh, model with 256 heating units. We use Senti CPU backend for this. Senti is the um, uh, inference engine uh, of Unity, right? Former known as Barracuda. So we use this CPU backend uh, for running um, the inference. So we assess our MPC performance on mobile using two metrics. First, the initial reaction time, which is the duration from when the MPC received the input to when it started performing an action or when it produced the first token to reply. This critical path includes tiny stories, language model, and the sentence similarity model, which is responsible for deciding whether it goes to perform an action or um, it is that we are talking about dialogue in this case. And the second, the reply time, which applies only to the dialogue mode. It is the time it takes to generate each subsequent token of reply. It is measured as time per token. So the evaluation was performed on a Google Pixel A Pro, and there are the specs, so nine cores. Um, so this is the one that I got here. Um, so let's see the video now. Uh, that I recorded. You will see the explained pipeline in action, how we interact with the MPC in dialogue mode, and how the sentence similarity model detects that the, an action must be performed and the MPC switch to an action mode. I will be available after the talk 
to show the application if any, anyone would like to try it. Um, yeah, now let's see the video. Hello there. Oh. Hi, I'm Tom. I'm new here and I see a friend. Hi, Tom. I'm John. Nice to meet you, John. I'm Tom. Do you want to play with me? What do you want to play? Let's play with my toys and have fun. Yes, but before that, I think we can tidy up your room first. That's a great idea. But how? I think we can make it fun. We can use my toys and my books and my clothes. Okay, maybe we can start by putting all the toys in the toy box. Let's do it. Let's start. Yes. Can you first put away the basketball? Remember that we are talking with a four, three, four year old brain, right? And then the yellow Lego next. I also see a car on your bed. Can you put that away as well? I can't reach there. Maybe you can use the stool to help you reach the bed. Nice. Now we can finally put the car away. You did a great job, Tom. Okay. What did you learn today? I learned that if I keep my room tidy, I can be a good friend. <laughs> That's nice. Goodbye, Tom. Goodbye. Uh, I think I need to go back to the, the screen. Is this one? No. Is this one? Okay. So yeah. Also, our NPC reply replies. Uh, Speed is, is fast enough, as you, as you see, so right. For real-time gaming, we can still improve the language model performance using methods like quantization and proning. It's our next plan. Right? This will help reducing the latency and the extra memory footprint used use by, by running the language model locally. So we will also like to add more complex dynamic actions to our MPC using Unity emulations to explore new use cases for the next generation of MPCs. Lastly, we want to continue improving the language model quality for MPC dialogues. This includes fine tuning or even retraining the tiny story with dialogue based data. We also want to improve the conversational memory so that the MPC can remember a wider context and, and of more variety. So I would like to share. Um, just a few thoughts as conclusions. First, the growing significance of language modeling technology. For the first time, thanks to language model, we have a new intuitive and natural way of interfacing with computers. So we want to raise more awareness about this revolutionary trend. Empower developers as well. We explore new ways of using Unity emulation to create complex MPCs. This should inspire more developers to create more interesting and richer gaming experiences. And in third, uh, boost accessibility, boost accessibility and interactivity in gaming. Verbal interaction humanizes NPCs, which not only enriches the interactive gaming experience, but also makes it accessible to wider audiences. And finally, inspire innovation in compact language model. And this is very important. To democratize language models, we need more research and industry effort in compact, mobile-friendly language models. 
So I would like finally to highlight the great work done by my colleagues, Sikon and Hong. They came to my team uh, for six months on the rotation program we have at, at ARM. And uh, what I have shared today is the result of their work as well. So I'm finally, I'm sharing here a link you can use to access ARM Developer Hub, where you will find many resources related with this project. You can also join the ARM Developer Program and enjoy the benefits of it. And uh, with this, yeah, uh, I finished the talk. And uh, yeah, I, I think that we should have a couple of minutes and leave for questions, right? Thank you. Thank you. Any question? Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, I wondered if you could talk a little more about how you map the um, input dialogue to actions for the character. Yeah, so as I, as I, explained, as I explained, we have a, a sentence similarity model, which is receiving the input from, uh, from the, um, the player, right, which is interacting with the NPC. So this in, um, sentence similarity model will look for the input and see if it is matching any of the actions, right, that the NPC has been trained for. If it matches any of the actions, then it directs that input to, to the uh, Unity emulation brain that has been trained to do that. So it performs the action. If not, so it can just goes and input the language model, the, the, the tiny story model, and the character we just replied to us according to its age, right? And I, and I, I just made a comment that this three to four year old uh, brain, right? We just can ask questions about the origin of the universe, right? <laughs> yeah. Any any other question? Yeah, thank you for the presentation. I'm curious about um, um, this is a, um, a complex uh, uh, work, and uh, um, I'm curious about the uh, like uh, conversation part. Uh, I think you must uh, uh, your work must uh, did a lot of like prompt engineer and uh, fun tune and build like build some logical train uh, to to do conversation. I know more about that. Yeah, as I said, we we haven't trained. This is an option that we we have to improve the conversational skills. So, but we haven't trained because of the time, right? But you can provide context. So the, the, the originally, the tiny story is, a, uh, is just to tell stories, right? Uh, originally, the model has been trained on a set, on a data set generated with um, 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 a large language model, ChatGPT, of, based on a small dialogue, uh, on a small stories, right? So of course the character, if you uh, originally, when we tell something, started to tell something without any link, right? Just some small story. But in the prompt, you can feed with small uh, sentences, which are like dialogue uh, character, right? And with that, we feed that always, right? And with that, it is able to keep an, uh, a conversation. So, but definitely, yeah, we, we would like to uh, to train the model, to retrain the model to be conversational. But for that, we need to generate, you know, the, the data set ourselves, and it will take uh, some time. But we can do that. I mean, using ChatGPT, for example, yes, it shouldn't be, it's not a big deal. It's just a question of, of time, right? Of time. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Good question, great question. Okay, um, given the time, well, if you have more questions, Roberto, I think yeah. we'll still be here. Let's, uh, thanks, Roberto, again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.